What's up everyone? I'm Connor and you're watching No Passport Needed where I'm making a dish from every single country in the world. Today we're going to Denmark and making Smalbrud. Smalbrud. Smalbrud? Smalbrud. How do you say that? Alright, so I think it's pronounced somewhere near Smalbrud. But I'm sure I'm butchering that, so I'm gonna say the Americanized version, which is smørbrød. So smørbrød means butter and bread in Danish, and these are the basis for the dish. Smørbrød is an open-faced sandwich that is topped with lots of different things like fish, meats, cheeses, or uh, veggies. While there are lots of different variations, I found that there are a few different rules that stay consistent through most of these. Number one, rugbrød. Rugbrød is a sourdough-based rye bread. It's the basis for almost all smørbrød. I found some that use white bread, but those are more the exception than the rule, so we're gonna stick to the rye bread today. Number two, you should not be able to see the bread. While the rye bread looks humble on its own, we want these to be topped enough that you can't see the bread underneath any of these toppings. Number three, fork and knife. While it is an open-faced sandwich, it's not something meant to be eaten with your hands. These are topped up enough that it'd be quite a mess if you tried to eat it without any silverware. Number four, the order in which you eat them. Generally it goes fish, and then meat, and then cheese. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. For our fish course, we're gonna be starting off with curry sild, which is a pickled herring tossed in a creamy curried sauce. For our meat course, we're gonna be making some roast beef topped with some creamy remoulade, pickles, and fried onion. Lastly, for our cheese course, we're gonna be doing blue cheese with pear and hazelnuts. All right, let's get to it. First thing, we're gonna hop into DeLorean and go back a couple days to start our rye bread at least two days before making the smurabrud. We're gonna soak 170 grams of pumpkin seeds and 330 grams of rye kernels with some water overnight. Next, let's mix our leaven. Mix together 125 grams of that quarantine sourdough starter, 210 grams of rye flour, and 350 grams of water. Cover and let that sit overnight. All right, it's been about 24 hours and our leaven is starting to smell nice and sour. To start, we're gonna drain the seeds and rinse them off. Next, to mix the dough, we're gonna combine 400 grams of our leaven, 20 grams of salt, 50 grams of malt syrup. I was able to find the malt syrup locally, but if you can't, you can sub in molasses or honey, 400 grams of rye flour, and 200 grams of water in a bowl. Add your seeds and mix the entire thing by hand until well incorporated. Next, we're going to liberally butter a large bread pan. Add the dough to the pan and level it out using a wet spatula. Cover it and leave it for two to six hours to rise. When you see a handful of pinhole sized holes, the bread is ready to bake. Bake the bread at 465 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes before reducing to 355 degrees Fahrenheit. Let it bake for another 40 to 70 minutes until the internal temperature reads about 208. Leave the bread to cool on a wire rack. Now here's the hard part. Once it's reached room temperature, put it in a Ziploc bag and let it sit overnight to let the moisture redistribute. After 24 hours, I'm dying to try this bread. It smells really hearty and deep, so let's slice into it and try it out with some butter. And that's exactly what it is. This bread is really delicious and actually a lot sweeter than I expected due to that malt syrup. I can't wait to try the s'more bread. First things first, pickled herring for our fish course. Woo, that's fish. Mix together about three fillets of pickled herring, 150 grams of mayo, 200 grams creme fraiche, one red onion diced up, one red apple, a couple tablespoons of chives, a tablespoon of curry powder, a teaspoon of sugar, and salt and pepper. Cover and refrigerate until you're ready to dig in. Cut up and butter a nice slice of our rye bread. We're gonna top with a couple heaping spoonfuls of our curried pickled herring. Garnish with some chopped apples and chives and we're good to go. I'm excited to try this. I gotta say, I really liked my first bite of this a lot. The creamy curried sauce was so rich and the pickled herring cut through it just right. On my second bite though, I got a little bold and had a massive piece of herring. It was a little bit much for me, but overall, I still liked the dish. I would have this again though. I would either cut the pickled herring up more or I'd swap it for a different protein like chicken. I almost forgot my snap. School. 
Moving on to the roast beef, we're going to start by making a fried onion garnish. Start off by thinly slicing one onion. Toss it with a few tablespoons of flour to coat. Pour the last of your oil in a Dutch oven pot and heat until it hits 350. Lightly place your onions in the oil and fry until they're golden brown. Place them on a paper towel lined baking sheet. Next up is our remoulade. Mix together a quarter cup mayo, one tablespoon Dijon, three tablespoons diced pickles, one tablespoon chopped capers, some chopped tarragon, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric, and salt and pepper. That's it, let's build this thing. Start laying down your roast beef, some chopped pickles, a few teaspoons of horseradish. Attempt to pipe your remoulade on if you're feeling fancy. Remember that you completely forgot the butter aspect of smur bread. And top with those crispy fried onions. This was definitely a lot more approachable than the pickled herring. The beef and the creamy remoulade were really rich together, and the horseradish and the pickles cut through them really nicely. Plus, who doesn't love some good fried onion? Finally, for our cheese course, we're going to start by slicing one pear in half. After the mandolin turns our pear to mush, we're going to resort back to our knife and thinly slice. Crumble up some nice blue cheese and chop some toasted hazelnuts. To build, we're going to take our sliced pears and no, butter first. All right, now we'll layer our pears on, followed by blue cheese and toasted hazelnuts. This one was delicious, super approachable and the easiest of all to make, but I felt like one addition could make it even better. Honey, and this was delicious. The blue cheese is the main player here, balanced out by the sweetness of the pear, and the hazelnuts have a nice toasted crunch to them. Thanks for watching. I had a ton of fun making this murbrud and can't wait to delve into Danish food further in the future. Do you have any other Danish foods that I should give a try? Maybe Abelskiver or something else? Let me know. If you'd like to follow along and see what country we do next, feel free to subscribe and let us know what you'd like to see. Thanks again. See you in the next one.